Welcome to the third video of our tutorial series Geodata to Envimat. In the last video, we managed to export a three-dimensional model area based on the geodata provided in the Open Data Initiative from New York City. In this video, we want to go further. We want to configure Envimat simulation files. So we want to put together the model area input file and also the simulation configuration, which is start of the simulation time, run simulation duration, and also the meteorology. We then want to run the simulation, and also we want to visualize and analyze the simulation results in QGIS. So let's go. So we start where we left off. We exported the model area input file, uh, so and called it nycbattery.inx. Now we want to go to the tab Create Envimat Simulation. And here we start with the overview. In the overview, you see that there are different sections. So there are two mandatory sections you have to fill out. This is basically the general sec settings where you define the name of the simulation and also give it information about which model area should be used. Also, there is the mandatory section of the meteorology because a microclimate model obviously needs a meteorology. Then there's also optional sections soil section, radiation section, building section, and so on. You can select and deselect them here if they should be written to this configuration or not. And the whole settings here, they should look quite familiar to the NVMED users because it's basically a representation of the NV guide. And for those of you who, who are not too familiar with the NV guide, check out the video about the NV guide where we get more into detail about the different settings of all the different sections. Okay, there's also the possibility to do some file management here. Uh, we can load simulation uh, files, so simulation configurations that we previously uh, defined. And here would be the save to file dialog. So when we once we have all the different settings set to the desired values, we can uh, define an output folder and uh, save the simulation file. So let's start with the general settings. My simulations should start on the 21st of July and it should be a summer day, so the date fits. The simulation start uh, time is 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, so this is a good start because then the sun is not up yet, so the energy balance, uh, balances are more or less at an equilibrium. The total simulation time is set to 24 hours, and this is yeah, basically standard for uh, if you want to simulate one day. So you can give it a, a name, the simulation task, and this might be QGIS first try or first sim, and then there is also a short um, simulation run, so QGIS run 01 might be a good name. And uh, you can also define a model output folder, so where the, where the output folder should be uh, written to. So if you leave this empty, it will be written inside the uh, your project in the workspace folder. And mo for most of the time, um, this is fine. So I leave it empty here so that the outputs will be written locally on my machine. For the model area input file, I now define the one that we um, that we uh, exported earlier. So this would be New York City Battery INX. Okay, so if I go to overview again, that you see that the checkbox here is is checked. So the, this general settings they are complete. We could run the simulation based on this already. Now for the meteorology, we have three options. We can run uh, the simple forcing, the full forcing, or the open and cyclic. Both these are, this is however uh, debreached, so um, deprecated, so we do not uh, encourage you to use this, but in ha instead use the simple or the full forcing. For this standard simulation, I just want to have a hot summer day and I want to define the values based on the simple forcing where I just give it the time of the maximum air temperature and set it to maybe 1600 and say 31 degrees and the time of minimum air temperature would be just before sunrise maybe with 19 degrees the time of maximum relative humidity um, it obviously makes sense that it the relative humidity is highest when the air temperature is lowest so five o'clock that that fits and let's make it a bit more humid and um, the time of minimum uh, relative air temperature uh, this would also be the time when the air is hottest and let's make it let's make it also a bit more humid. When I press update, these hourly values are um, 
interpolated based on these values, but you can also cha always change these here and, and enter uh, user-defined values um, if you want to make it uh, yeah, less interpolated and, and more realistic in that case. The next parameter you can enter is the humidity at 2.5 kilometers height. This is not a very sensitive parameter, so in most cases I would recommend uh, leaving it at 9 grams per kilogram. The wind speed obviously is important, so if you want to have maybe a hot summer day, often comes with a very little wind speed, so 1 or 2 meters per second or 1.5 meters per second is not a too unrealistic value here, uh, that the air is not moving too fast. And the wind direction, we want to have it coming from the south-southwest, so over uh, the water body and then streaming into uh, our model area domain. The roughness length um, is set already uh, quite nicely, and we want to have a clear summer day, so no clouds. So these octars are all to, to set to zero, um, which means uh, yeah, a clear sky, clear blue sky scenario. Um, for this simulation, I also want to edit the, the soil section. I want to um, make it uh, quite a, a medium uh, dry soil. So I select, okay, also edit the soil section and now uh, I can edit it. And yeah, it's already set to quite uh, low values. So um, I want to have a, a hot initial temperature of the, um, of the soil because it's already the 21st of July. So the summer has been going on for quite some time. And uh, maybe there were some rain events, uh, but not too many. So the, the soil humidity would be around 40% uh, of the usable field capacity. Yeah? And obviously it, it, uh, yeah, it increases with, with the depth. Okay, the other sections, um, like I said, um, you can look them up in, in the video about the NV guide. And I want to leave them uh, as standard. And now I uh, want to save my simulation settings and uh, I call it uh, battery July 21st and I say save simx file. So the simx file has now been created and I can look at it either here and open it in the text editor but I could also open it in, uh, in the NV guide um, and look at it again or alter it again. Also, I could alter uh, load it here and alter the settings if I uh, wanted so, wanted to do so. So this would be the simulation settings in the text editor again. So now let's run the simulation. Uh, running the simulation uh, can be done using the start NVMED simulation uh, tab. So for this, obviously, you have to have NVMED installed on your PC locally. Um, you first define the project folder. This would be the workspace in, the, in your workspace folder, the, the project, in our ca uh, case Q is, uh, QGIS Tutor. And you se uh, select the simulation file, in our case, battery July 21st. Uh, then once I uh, click run or start simulation, a uh, command prompt will open and uh, it will be the simulation will be run and it will be run independently of QJS. So you can continue working with QJS, you can close QJS, it doesn't really matter. Um, and it will, uh, the simulation will keep running. And um, obviously since the model area is not uh, too small, it's more than 200 grids uh, large, uh, this uh, will take some time and I will speed up the process. Okay, the simulation is running and while it's writing its outputs, uh, we can already take a look in at the simulation uh, files. So the, we uh, click on select files and uh, we go into our output folder, maybe atmosphere, we want to look at the atmosphere data and uh, we want to open the, the files from 11 to uh, 1300. Mm -hmm. And so we load all this data um, in, into here, into this uh, group box, and we click on load data. This might uh, take a while, but once it's loaded, um, we can uh, select which variable we want to load, and then uh, define the height of the variable, the name of the, the layer, and then also we can define uh, which uh, mode we want to load the data in. For example, we can load the data um, without a rotation, and with, without an interpolation, this is the fastest method. Uh, we can load it rotated but not interpolated, depending on the rotation. Uh, this might lead then to, to very um, edgy um, raster files. Or we can rotate it and interpolate the data. This is 
obviously the, the most accurate uh, information, but it uh, might take the longest time. So uh, I'll do that now for the air temperature and select the air temperature. Okay, so I select the potential air temperature and I um, want to have the height and the Z level of two. So with the gridding that I said earlier, um, this would result in a model area height of around 1.25 meters. And I click add to map. Again, this might, like I said, take a bit of time. And since that, um, I will speed up the process again. Okay, the data has been loaded into our map. And what we can see is that in we created, or it created um, three temporary raster layer. So 1300, 12, and 11. And uh, obviously the gray band uh, color is not too nice, but we can of course use the symbology again and uh, say, okay, we want to have a pseudo color, single band uh, color. And yeah, this color palette is actually quite nice. So it's the curb, uh, turbo color. And uh, we do not, maybe we do not want to have the continuous uh, color ramp because then we cannot see the uh, data differentiation as nice, but maybe a quantile uh, color ramp. And uh, in the quantile color ramp, we see quite nicely the uh, different air temperature distributions at 1300. So first you see that the air temperature is when it comes through, you have the south southwest, um, uh, wind flow. So we see that the air temperature uh, keeps being quite low when it uh, when it comes th over the ocean. And then um, the air temperature, once it reaches the park where there's lots of trees, we can see the trees obviously again here too, if I move them up. Uh, it, the cooler air temperatures are closely linked to the locations of the, the tree, the trees in the park. And then there's the areas where you have lots and lots of um, sealed surfaces and no vegetation. You see that the air temperature rises up to almost 29 degrees centigrade. Yeah, And it's a huge gap between these values here where it's uh, yeah, in the low 20s up to 29 degrees centigrade here. Uh, also within the park, so here's also some park area. I can quickly um, check the Google map screen here. There's also green area but it's there's no shading due to the um, due to the trees so the uh, grass gets quite hot because uh, the air, the soil humidity is not too high so the latent heat flux of the grass is not uh, too big and the air temperature rises also above the the grass and uh, yeah you also see a big impact of the building obviously here and uh, yeah the um, the sealed uh, surface behind the building so uh, this is obviously a quite a nice uh, visualization. Uh, what you can also do is yeah, uh, get more information about the buildings. Maybe you visualize the buildings in 2.5D. So you select 2.5B D, uh, buildings and the building height should be the parameter um, from which the, the height should be calculated. You apply this and uh, then the buildings yeah, look three-dimensional. You can also change the um, the color of the facades, etc. Um, the trees would be maybe better if they were below. Yeah. Oh no. Between the. Yeah. Change the uh, the order of the the layers here, and um, yeah. You, this way you can visualize your your model results and yeah, uh, analyze which areas are more closely linked to the different vegetation. Obviously, if you run multiple simulations, you can uh, look at the at multiple rasters um, where you maybe you added some more trees or removed some trees, added a building, uh, look at different uh, differences maps uh, this way. So uh, the way to use this uh, visualization would be um, more or less the same as, uh, as this uh, Leonardo visualization where you can also take a look at the simulation results obviously because th uh, the plugin writes the same outputs as um, as uh, the typical headquarter would do uh, do so too. Um, you should also or uh, you can also make these um, because they are temporary layers. Yeah, you can make them permanent. Yeah, and so you can export these layers and say save as as a, a geotiff, for example, and say okay, I want to save this geotiff as T Air thirteen hundred. 
and then uh, it would be saved permanently to your hard drive. Um, of course, then uh, you would have to make the symbology or save the symbology again. Yeah, but this is uh, yeah, this is not too uh, not too uh, big of a task. So here is the the same symbology again. And of course, QGIS with the built-in functions uh, is also able to um, give you access to, for example, share this information in a web map server or send this uh, geo-referenced uh, TIFF uh, to your colleagues or to your clients, uh, and also to uh, create uh, print layouts. So this is what I want to show you. Um, so I want to create an empty uh, layout. I want to call it uh, Bed Park. 1300, for example, T air, and uh, here is my my print layout. And for the print layouts, I will add obviously the map, which contains the data, and this would be here. And then I would maybe add, want to add a, a scale, yeah, a scale bar, and maybe also um, I want to add the um, a picture. You could add obviously a picture, but also a north arrow. Uh, and also the legend maybe and for the legend you yeah maybe you want to deselect all the information that are not uh, in the map um, currently so only show the items that are linked in the map yeah this is obviously um, something that, that might make sense or renaming the trees so that you know which tree species is what yeah not using the um, envy IDs here um, apparently I have two Oh yeah, I'll have two um, simulation results here, so uh, enabled. So this is also something that might make sense uh, to only show the one simulation result and the color color ramp here. Then you can add a title um, to the map, and you can yeah create nice looking maps using the built-in functions of uh, QGIS. Okay. This should be it for the introduction tutorial on the QGIS plugin Geodata to EnvyMed. Don't hesitate to uh, get in touch with us uh, and try it out, give us feedback. Thank you for watching and goodbye.